Welcome to the Life Self Mastery Podcast, where we bring in entrepreneurs who have created online businesses and improved their lifestyles. Here's your host, Rohit Malhotra. Hi everyone, I'm Rohit from LifeSelfMastery.com and today we have John Lee Dumas who's a founder and host of EO Fire and a world winning podcast where he interviews today's most inspiring entrepreneurs seven days a week with over 1400 episodes and seven figures a year in revenue. Uh, John Lee Dumas has shown the world of power of podcasting. Uh, welcome to the show, John. Rohit, I'm excited to be here, brother, to give a little update. I'm now over 2000 episodes of Entrepreneurs on Fire. So I've been busy. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, um, so you know, you, you have a, have a great brand. You, you, uh, you know, done more than two thousand episodes. Uh, how do you keep on evolving your podcast and your personal brand? You know, for me, it's always just about continuing to serve my audience, my listeners, and to ask them what are their biggest struggles, what are their biggest obstacles, what are their biggest challenges, and then to find ways to bring that into my show and create the solution for them in the form of the content, the products, the services, the communities that we're creating around Entrepreneurs on Fire. So for me, it's just always interacting, having that engagement with my listeners and making sure that I'm serving them first and foremost. Got it. And, you know, when you started, you did not have uh, much of an audience. So how did you uh, get some, some big name guests to agree uh, to, your, uh, to, to, you know, for, uh, to come for an interview before launching the show? You know, there's a combination of a lot of things. Uh, timing was big. I launched my podcast at a great time when there just wasn't a lot of other uh, podcasts that were out there interviewing successful entrepreneurs. So there just wasn't a huge saturation in the market at that point. Number two, I was very strategic. Like I waited for people like Seth Godin and Tim Ferriss to be launching a podcast, uh, sorry, launching a book or a product that I knew that they were going to be in big time um, promotion mode. And then I waited strategically. And when they were, I reached out to them and said, Hey, you know, Seth, Tim, I know you're going to launch a book. It's meant for entrepreneurs and small business owners. And I would love to have you on my platform, my podcast to talk about it and to share the message and the mission with my listeners. And let's get some sales of the book. Let's get some sales of the product. And uh, that's how I got some of the big early guests on. And then once you get one or two of the really big name guests on your show, then who's going to say no? Because now that Tim Ferriss, Seth Godin, Barbara Corcoran, Tony Robbins have been on my show, you know, that's pre-qualifying it for everybody else. And once they see that, you're good to go. Got it. And, uh, you know, what, what should one uh, uh, focus on when it comes to monetizing a new show? Because, uh, you know, a lot of sponsors look at what, what's on downloads you make, but uh, initially you, you're struggling to build a base and getting more downloads. So, so how, how, what is your strategy on monetizing a show? Yeah, when it comes to monetizing, I think you got to really recognize that it's not going to come overnight. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. But what you have to be doing with your show and with whatever you're doing in your entrepreneurial venture in general is focusing on solving the big problems that your listeners have, that your audience has. What are their biggest obstacles, their biggest challenges, their biggest struggles? How are you creating a solution for them in the form of a product or a service or a community? Like really think about those things, really fill in the blank. And then once you know what those things are, then guess what? Then you step in and you create that, you offer it to them and you're off to the races. Got it. Uh, so you know, uh, on your on your website, you show that you you number of way, a number of revenue models. Uh, you know, like affiliate marketing, sponsorships, online courses. Uh, you you got journals like Freedom Journal, Mastery Journal. You also come in with podcast journal. So you know, uh, how do you identify uh, a a person's problem, and how do you how do you then decide to create a product around it? So what I do is I really have one-on-one -on -one conversations with my listeners. You know, I ask them, how did you find out about me? Like, how did you find out about the show? And then I start to find ways that they've actually heard about the show. Then I ask them, what do you like about the show? What don't you like about the show? I get a lot of great content that way. And then I go back and I ask them, what is your biggest struggle right now? And I hear them say, I struggle with goals. So I created the Freedom Journal so that they can set and accomplish their number one goal in 100 days. And then, well, I struggle with productivity. I struggle with discipline. I'm not really able to focus. Okay, I launched the Mastery Journal. 
uh, master productivity, discipline, and focus in 100 days. And, oh, but I want to learn how to launch a podcast. Okay, here's the podcast journal. Idea to launch in 50 days. I really just keep things simple for people, and I make that happen. Got it. And uh, do you usually um, send out a survey or, or, or questionnaire uh, to ask these questions or, uh, you know, uh, to do just send out a novel newsletter to get, you know, answers to it? And, and what what sort of an email list should, should one have before, you know, they can start with monetizing their, their website or a podcast show? Right away. There's no magic number. I mean, if you have one person on your email list, start practicing your sales tactics, start practicing your offers and ask for feedback and ask for engagement and you can just be improving every step of the way. So there's just no magic number you're going to build to before you start monetizing. It should really start on day one because it's going to be a learning process for you. You're going to struggle. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fall down multiple times, but then you're going to get back up. You're going to learn. You're going to improve. You're going to adjust and you're going to be able to keep going forward until you've got multiple revenue streams that are coming down your way. Got it. Uh, you know, also on your website, I, I saw that you have a very specific avatar. Uh, you know, how, how can one somebody define uh, the avatar clearly? Is it, is it going through their, uh, spying on their Facebook profile and seeing you know, what do they like and who they are and, you know, or who the entrepreneurs they're, they're following? You know, how, how did you get on to define a very, very specific avatar? So what was your question? How do I find a specific avatar? That's right. That's right. Well, I know how to create an avatar. You know, you create an avatar by identifying who is the perfect listener for your podcast. Who's the perfect viewer for your video? Who's the perfect reader of your blog post or email? Like you sit down and you create the perfect avatar, that one perfect listener, viewer, consumer, whatever that might be, you craft that person. And then once you've sat down and you've crafted that person, then you say to yourself, okay, where is this person spending time at? Where are they actually engaging with other people? I can tell you one big place or Facebook group. So if you are, you know, let's just say a cricket player and you love cricket, go and join a couple free, thriving, engaging cricket groups on Facebook and boom, you can start conversations there. You can start asking them questions, maybe having surveys and saying, hey, what are your biggest struggles right now? What are your biggest obstacles? What do you enjoy most about cricket? What do you hate most about cricket? You start learning and engaging and just inquiring and being curious and then you're going to start to see what type of content that you should probably be creating around the cricket world in your podcast, on your emails, via your blog, your video show, whatever that might be. So that can be a great way to go about first identifying and then finding your avatar. Got it. So, so, um, so you know, you, uh, you've been on to your show for, uh, for a couple of years now. How do you keep adding new listeners since, you know, uh, uh, you've been doing for five years now? Yeah, now that uh, Entrepreneurs on Fire is about to celebrate its sixth year anniversary in just about a month, you know, I, I do continue to say, what are ways that I can improve the show? Because there's a big quote that I do believe, and that's, don't focus on getting bigger, focus on getting better. And that's a personal quote of mine. Um, so I don't focus on getting my show bigger. I focus on making my show better. All that time, energy, and bandwidth that people are spending trying to get more listeners and trying to market and trying to grow, like that's all fine and dandy. But guess what? If you are getting more listeners to your show and your show's crap, well, that's not going to really help you out that much. So the really successful podcasts that I found have been those that have said, you know what? I'm going to spend all of my time, energy, and bandwidth on making my show better. So when people come, they love the show. They subscribe to the show. They tell their friends, their family, their loved ones, their peers about the show. That's how you get bigger is by focusing on getting better. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great strategy. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, how do you keep yourself motivated because you – uh, uh, you, you have a patching process where you you take a lot of interviews on one single day, or you you know other people show on one one single day. So you know how, how do you keep yourself motivated to to keep churning out uh, all these episodes for you've been doing it for such a long time. So uh, so what's what's the secret behind it? I just recognize the end game. I know that people are listening and their lives are being changed. Maybe by something that I'm saying, maybe by something that my guest is saying, maybe by a combination of the both. But I just know that people that are listening to my show are getting value, are being helped. And then they're going to go off and start something new and inspire other people. And that ripple effect, that two, three, four, five degrees of separation, that's what really excites me when it comes to the podcasting world. I just love 
love the fact that my show is inspiring people that I will never meet to improve their lives. I think that is simply phenomenal. Awesome. Um, so, what is the next big opportunity for uh, for you? You know, you 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 have uh, you cre- you've created income from affiliate marketing courses uh, and then physical products. So, uh, so what what is the big opportunity for you then? You know, honestly, the next opportunity that um, I have and that I've created is is something that's completely free for people because I've identified that successful entrepreneurs they're successful because they focus on one big thing. They have one big idea and they just go all in and they dominate. So I sat down and I spent a lot of time, a lot of energy and a lot of focus to create a completely free training that's going to get you to your big idea. Because the reality is this, every single person that's listening falls into one of three camps. You either don't have a big idea or you have a lot of ideas, but you're not sure which is the big idea, or you do have a big idea, but you need clarity, you need focus, you need direction. Whichever one of these three camps that you're in, you need to visit yourbigidea.io. That's yourbigidea.io. Take my free training, get to that big idea, get your North Star, and then you're off to the races. Awesome. And, uh, you know, you you, uh, recently shifted to Puerto Rico, I think it's been a couple of years now. So, so why, why did you choose uh, that place to live? Uh, is it because a better network of people over there or is it just a better place for you? For so, you? we did not know a single person in Puerto Rico when we moved. So, we had no idea what the net- network was going to be. But we moved to Puerto Rico, number one, because it was an adventure. And, you know, living in the Caribbean is always a, a cool idea. And number two, simply put, taxes. Uh, if you're an entrepreneur and you move to Puerto Rico, you pay a flat 4% tax rate. And that is a thing of beauty. Awesome. So, um, so let's put you to the top three. What's your favorite business book? I would say it's The One Thing by Gary Keller. It's just an amazing business book for um, entrepreneurs. Got it. And if you go back in time when you started your podcast, what is the one thing you would have focused on? Engaging one-on-one with my early listeners, getting on calls with them. Okay. And, and what's your favorite online tools, example, Gmail or Slack? Schedule Once is my online calendar. I cannot live without it. Awesome. Um, what is the best way people will reach out to you? I'd say head over to eofire.com. That's where all the magic happens. I would love for anybody to um, subscribe to my podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire. But eofire.com has free courses for entrepreneurs, a lot of great stuff there. And final call to action is just visit uh, yourbigidea.io and get to your big idea. It's a free training. Get over there. It won't take long. You'll be off to the races. Right. It was awesome talking to you. Thanks a lot for coming on this, onto the show. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Life Self Mastery Podcast, where we teach you how to start and grow your online business. For more information, visit Rohit's blog at www.lifeselfmastery.com.